Hi, thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act Two, where two old guys talk about stuff. Right, Art? Yeah, a lot of stuff. Uh, and I'm not talking about double stuff like Oreos. I'm talking about stuff, real stuff. Real uh, stuff, yeah. Speaking That's about real stuff, it seems to me that uh, every couple of years, and I know this this is one of those every couple of years, you make a pilgrimage to the old country. In your oh, case, yeah. a, 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 a number of uh, city-states. Oh, yeah. Yes, the uh, old country. But this oh, year... Yeah. And I know that every so often you go to see some relatives you haven't seen in a long time. But have you ever uh, really started to deep dive into maybe lost members of the tribe, of the Coleman tribe? Interestingly, uh, we have a pretty big family when you go back. Uh, there were only three kids in my family, but my mother came from a family of nine children. Mm. So you can imagine on that side, I got lots and lots of cousins. And, of course, it's easy to lose touch with people. So over the years, with the nine kids, first of all, you can imagine that the first of the nine children was about 20 years older than the last of the nine children. Right. And by, by the way, just as an aside, unlike uh, uh, generations past that didn't tend to move around so much, uh, everybody tended to stay in, in the exactly. same general part of the country. So you knew them. Uh, and then as people migrate to different parts of the country, you begin to lose touch yeah. with certain sections of the family that you might otherwise have been in touch with. Sure. And, and our generation probably moved a lot more than the previous generation. Right. So at this point, all of my cousins, not only are we, some of us, 20 years uh, apart, um, but the older cousins are, a, a bunch of them are dead already. Right. And a lot of the younger cousins are, you know, just now having children and their children are having children. So uh, it's a, I'm kind of in the middle, but not quite. So anyway, I what I do is those of us, those of us in the family tree that are interested in the genealogy, we keep in touch and we trade stories and we try to remember um stories about not only our parents, but our grandparents and great grandparents. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, there's family history, every family, you can trace it back at least a couple of generations. And so um, what I've done is I've this year, because I'm heading to New York for um, a genealogy trip, if you will. Mm. Um, this year, I've contacted some cousins that I, of course, I knew about, but have never met. And um, it's pretty interesting. So I'm going to meet uh, some cousins in New Jersey from uh, my mother's side of the family. They are the children of one of the oldest. They're the grandchildren of one of the oldest brothers and sisters on my mother's side. I'm going to meet a cousin from my father's side of the family, who, by the way, I only met 10 years ago. Hmm. First time ever met 10 years ago. We were put together by the... Historical Association in Port Jervis, New York. I contacted them. I said, do you know anything about the Kiernans? Yeah. And she said, well, I I have a request from a guy named Kiernan. Uh, but I, I said, could you give me his phone number? She said, well, I can't do that. But I said, well, call him and ask him if he'd call me. Here's my phone number. So this Historical Association in, in the library in Port Jervis, New York, put us together Long lost cousins didn't even know this guy existed, and ten years now we've been in keeping in touch. We're going to meet again, hmm. and let's see. I've got a bunch more, but one cousin is my grandfather's brother's niece, maybe grand niece, something like that, and she just found our side of the family, if you will. We don't know why. The two brothers, her grandfather and our grandfather, might have been estranged from each other, but it appears that they were uh, because nobody kept in touch. Mm. So there's a lot of meeting going on, and I'll report back on it um, because genealogy, you know this, Art. Uh, you're pretty good with your family history. Yeah, we are. Genealogy is uh, reportedly the second most popular hobby in the U.S. Next to? Next, well, I don't want to say it, but as I was researching it, it it made a reference to porn. So really? I hope porn is, 
I hope right. porn is. Thank, you person. know, thank, thankfully, some things there are consistent, though. Okay, so it's it, well, but it's second most. Sec, or at least the second. You know, it's kind of interesting. Um, uh, from a ge genealogical standpoint, I think that there's going to be less people who uh, uh, lose touch because of social media. Uh, oh, Lin I'm, I'm sure. L I'm Linda, sure. Linda, uh, my wife, Linda is has uh, sort of semi been in touch with some distant co cousins who were we always used to see in the neighborhood. You know, at least two, three times a year uh, when we lived back east. But now they're adults, and uh, Linda has been in touch with them, and she speaks to them every three or four months now on a regular basis. Whereas up until a few years ago, she didn't. And you know that even though he wasn't family. Uh, I met uh, my longest uh, term friend, Lloydie, uh, who I had, I, I'd known since I was five years old, but we lost touch with one another. And then about four or five years ago, I found them again through social media. So um, this way, I don't have to now go online and, and give a, 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 a swab to somebody who's going to find out that I'm related to Jack the Ripper or something and then blame <laughs> me and then sue me. Uh, I know yeah. that you're worried about the same thing about, you know, uh, DNA that's left over some, some crime scene. Uh, yeah. So we don't want to do that. But uh, I, I think that social media is changing that landscape. Oh, yeah. And allowing people to, to remain in touch. And there's so many social media sites now. Of course, I think maybe Ancestry.com is the no. the most famous. But there's three or four a 23 that are really me. good. 23 and me. But many of those things are finding... Uh, uh, relatives and, and genia lines back to Europe or Africa or yeah. wherever your your lines uh, take you. So uh, as yeah. opposed to the families you, you've grown up with and have lost touch with, that's really right. more what, what you're in search of right now. Well, that's what I'm kind of searching for. And I'm still missing my, uh, my Coleman cousins. I don't know where they are. Uh, five girls. Wish I could be in touch with some of them. Mm. I hope they're all healthy and well. Um, but I'd love to be in touch with them. I'd love to find them and meet with them again. Okay, so anybody, Coleman, from what area of the world? Were these, uh, well, New York. New we're, York? We're an old New York family. Okay, so uh, an old New York family, if you know Coleman, uh, Cousin Coleman. Even if you're not a cousin, if your name is even close to Coleman, Cole woman, doesn't matter. Okay. Get in touch with you're us. Not, I don't think you're helping, Art. Oh, I'm not. Uh, but <laughs> anyway, so listen. On your, when you get back from your trip, so we're expecting a full report of uh, uh, how, how these uh, meetings went. I will let you know how it goes because, again, just in general, genealogy is kind of a fascinating uh, thing. And I think it's something common for most people. It's obviously the second most popular hobby. Mm. But I, I would recommend to everybody to go on to you know, pick your genealogy site that you like best, go on, register, sign up, and you never know what you're going to find. If nothing else, your kids will have a record for you. You're leaving for them. So I, I recommend that, uh, particularly at our age, I, when, when do you suppose art, at what age do people become interested in the past and their family and their history and general. Uh, gen uh, I think you. I think you're hitting on it. As we get older, we get maybe a little bit more uh, uh, less uh, uh, vicious about that uh, slight that we got from the family member, or we were told that Uncle Eddie was really a, a creep and he was not nice to Aunt Bessie, and uh, and therefore the Hatfields and McCoys were born. Uh, yeah. I, and we get a little bit more. Uh, You're taking me down a road that I wasn't going to go. Oh, sorry, Uncle Uncle Eddie, huh? You had one too. Maybe we're Creepy related. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe maybe we ought to end this if we're going to get into creepy Uncle Eddie. So yeah. Um, so I'll report, let you know about my genealogical trip and what I find the people I meet. And um, meanwhile, I recommend that everybody. Take a look at your family history. Get in touch with your relatives. Stay in touch. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.